what you see is a real labor of love project. Yeah, I've been working on it for a while, excited to share. Sneak peek. <laughs> the pattern is from Love Notions. Huge site-wide sale going on right now. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing and I have a super easy to sew jacket for you today and I'm talking about super super easy I will prove that when you see the sewing footage <laughs> and the jacket pattern I've used is the Coda jacket from Love Notions This was released back in February and I already have a video about it Back then I made a single layer with a collar version There's also a hood you can add on or you can just leave the neckline nice and simple it's nice and rounded over here and that is the vision I had for this one for this one I wanted to make it lined which is different to what I used in the previous one as I mentioned the Love Notion sale is live from May 1st to Friday the 5th all the patterns in the site are going to be 40% off but there's a little trick you know because if you're a viewer of mine and you know my code you can add pins 10 at checkout and it will come down a further 10% off so that's amazing <laughs> don't forget to use my code because the price comes down even further even on top of sale prices like the 40% off it will still work I will leave you my affiliate link down below my general affiliate link plus the link of the jacket I'm making now I'll also leave you a link to the playlist with all the Love Notions makes a feature on the channel it's a huge playlist whatever you're looking for you'll find it there whatever pattern you're interested in, each video is quite in depth about each one of them and uh, hacks and multiple versions all of that I've always enjoyed my makes I'll have special content around the sale during the week so let's get back to the special jacket I think it's great for in between weather like spring and autumn take inspiration <laughs> this is designer inspired I've been planning for a few months to go full on making a French style jacket I'm not naming brands here but you know the brand <laughs> and I do have patterns and notions and it's going to take a long time there's going to be a lot of hand sewing in there and that type of jacket can be as complex as you want it to be or it can be really simple like the one I'm going to show you where you still get the look without all that work now these jackets can have different types of embellishments from the same fabric and in this case the amount left I had was just enough for a skirt and I sort of weighed my options do I use that amount of fabric on the trims and embellishments or do I use it for a skirt and the skirt option one so I went into my stash of trims last year in August I went to Sao Paulo where the fabric district is and I found some amazing haberdashery huge shops so much and I bought quite a bit of trim thinking about these jackets I'm at a huge haberdashery in Sao Paulo and I'm here to look for trims and things for my Chanel type jackets and other things and I'm just trying to be very discreet about this. I saw some here that would be good for the jackets. I do think I will make my trim eventually for something but this was not the occasion as my goal was to make a simplified version. So yeah, my trim matched my fabric perfectly. Let me show you my fabric. It's a wool blend and I had to choose between this side or this side. I could have chosen either or for the right side of the fabric. I think officially this is the right side of the fabric, but this was nice as well. I ended up choosing this to be the outside. It's got a fairly loose weave. You can see the fibers going through. You can see it will unravel pretty easily. I think it could snag very easily. So from the get-go, I decided I was gonna interface the whole thing. Now I can't give you brands because I buy generic brands over here, but I'll show it to you. You can see how lightweight it is. It's basically sheer. This is interfacing that's fusible and it doesn't stretch at all. It's very easy to fuse on, lightweight, and I'm gonna cut every single piece and interface them. I'm going to be interfacing every single piece with this for the whole jacket, the pockets, the flaps, the main pieces everything so I use this for everything and I keep quite a large amount of yardage there is no possible way I could wear this against my skin I find it a little bit scratchy as most wool and wool blends are so this needs to be lined and I don't want anything flashy I want something discreet and what better than a black lining inside this is just poly satin lining it's actually lining material I would not make clothes out of this it's extremely soft very very soft on the skin lightweight easy to work with so that is going to be my lining 
and because we're making things simple I'm not going to be making bias tape to go around the jacket I'll just be using my store-bought satin bias tape this is three quarters of an inch wide like this extended and when you fold it it'll be really narrow and discreet I want it to be narrow like this so that it can be covered by the trim now the only reason I used it was because it was going to be easy I already had all that yardage I didn't have to make it you know and I'm trying to simplify this you know <laughs> So that was good. I would not have been happy to use that type of bias tape to finish my jacket if I was not going to cover that with a trim. I don't think it looks very nice. I don't think it looks very elegant. You know, I just would not have done that. But because the trim was going to cover it, I was happy to use it. And on the inside, it's just going to blend with the lining. Here you can see the trim up close. I've got quite a bit of yardage of this. Here is the trim up close. It's got those golden threads inside with the fuzzy bits. I think it matches my fabric perfectly. And this is what's gonna go around the neckline. I'll be doing that by hand. Of course you need buttons. I think buttons are really important. This jacket without buttons would end up looking really plain, at least for this style, in my opinion. And I only had two choices. These buttons are smaller, and I think the gold around it was a little darker compared to the trim. Also, the pearl in the middle is beige. And the jacket fabric is actually just black and white. And then I had these other ones that are slightly larger, where the gold around them was lighter in tone, and the detail in the center was actually white. Much more inclined to this one, so I put up poll on my patreon page and my patreon subscribers helped me decide and confirm that this was the better choice for this jacket you can see that not many notions were needed to make this jacket come true lining main fabric binding trim buttons interfacing that's all paired up with a great pattern that I already know fits and it can be really simple if you want it to be i wanted something that was black and white so it would be like a neutral <laughs> As such I don't know so I could wear it with many other solid colors in whatever color it was gonna go and the goal was to make a really pretty jacket that would just last a lifetime and be very classic initially I had thought about straightening out that curve on the side which I think makes it look a bit more informal and I had already decided on that hundred percent but as the days went by when I finally got to cutting it I completely forgot and I was just my mind just sort of started thinking about something else while I was cutting and I ended up cutting that curve on the side I, there was no way I could fix that so I was just committed to keeping on going but my original idea was to just straighten that out and just have a simple side seam without that curve Oh well, it still looks really nice. I'm still really happy, but I would suggest you concentrate. <laughs> it happens to all of us. I have some sewing to share with you, some general construction, just how this all came together. And yeah, it was just a delight. So let's see some practical bits and I'm so excited to share my dream jacket. Whenever I use wool, because I can't really pre-wash it normally, I do put a lot of steam on it. It might shrink a little with the steaming, but that's the whole idea. So all I do is go up and down, full steam, and I get through the whole yardage, and then I just let it dry before I cut it out. I want to get it pretty, pretty damp, actually. I don't want to be going like this, because I don't want to upset the weave. This one is pretty loosely woven, so I'm just going up and down. This wool is super loosely woven. I know over time it can deform, and it could be super easy for it to snag on things. So I'm just going to use a lot of interfacing and interface every single piece. You can see I'm interfacing the back here, which is cut on the fold. I am block fusing, so you can see there's a shape there, but it's actually a little bigger than my pattern piece. Once all of this pieces interface then I'll put my actual pattern piece on top and cut the piece just trim off the edges because I don't want my pieces shrinking while I interface all the surface it is a lengthy process I did separate a whole day to be able to do this to just cut and interface all the pieces it does take a long time it can be a little bit tiring but for a fabric like this I think it's totally worth it this is my sleeve it's already interfaced the whole piece you can see it's a little bit larger than my piece I cut out all my pattern pieces like this and then I'm going in with my rotary cutter it's quite a thick layer here there are two layers of the wool plus the interfacing maybe I should have done it in a single layer so I'm really struggling there with the rotary cutter but it was possible to do after a few hours of work I have everything ready and there you can see all the pieces for my jacket, all of them are interfaced, and here are my pieces for the lining, they are exactly the same. I'm going to finish all the edges with bias tape, satin bias tape. It won't be seen because it will be covered with this trim, so I'm not concerned about the satin bias tape. I wouldn't use it if that was going to be the only finish of the jacket, 
but since it's going to be covered with that trim i'm going to save time by using that even though all the pieces are fully interfaced i'm still going to go the extra mile and stay stitch the areas that might deform like the curved shape on the neckline i'm going to do that in the same direction and i just want to make sure everything's protected this area is going to be bound together with the lining so i'm stay stitching less than a quarter of an inch from the edge so that i make sure it's not seen at a later stage the general construction of the jacket is really easy i have my bust that sewn already i'm going to sew some shoulder seams some side seams then you have the seam of the sleeve which is just a one piece sleeve so the general construction is easy and it's not going to change i'm going to do it just the way i did my other coda jacket and then we have the exact same thing for the lining layers the same seams they are identical to each other just general construction here i'm sewing shoulder seams because this is going to be a line jacket i'm not going to be doing any surged areas at all i'm just going to leave it as is and it's also a little bit protected because it's been interfaced the whole way through so i'll just be pressing all the seams open now i'm sewing the side seams of course that bust that was already sewn that was one of the first steps i did this is my own bust that the pattern doesn't have one but i did a bust adjustment so that i could be between the regular and the full bust option so if you haven't done that you won't have that bust that and you can ignore it but i think it was important for my fitting this seam will also just be pressed open and the seam allowance is 3 8 of an inch the reason you're seeing horizontal pins is because i'm attempting to match the print there on the side seams and i remove them a millisecond before i'm about to sew over them now i'm sewing the long seam for the sleeves i'll do that here for my main layer and all the seams you've seen me sew will just be repeated with the lining all of them will have their seams pressed open very easy setting the sleeve in is super easy it's basically one to one so you don't need to gather anything in it's just super super easy you can see the seams are pressed open already and i'm just sewing it on the round in the pattern the instructions show it on the flat but for this type of bulky fabric i would not want to do it on the flat at all it will just turn out really bulky under your arm it could be really uncomfortable so i'm doing it on the round like i do everything what you're seeing here is the pocket flap and I've decided to do it this time. This pocket flap is interfaced but it's not lined. I'm keeping it a single layer with the interfacing. I think that's enough. And I'm just sewing on my bias tape around the edges here, around the curve. You can see it is hand basted first and I'm just going to sew that and that'll finish the edge. Remember this satin bias tape is not going to be seen because it will be covered with a trim. I think this will not be a nice finish and I will not make my jacket like this. But this is the way I'm doing it because I know it's going to be hidden. I am sewing the trim everywhere by hand and i'm just going along the edge of that golden area tiny tiny stitches all that fluffy bit from the edge of the trim is going to hide this stitch and i would not have been happy to do this by machine it just wouldn't have turned out nice with your hands you can really regulate the curve as it's going around it's just easier to conform to the curve like that and i'm just taking my sweet time to make this jacket every single edge that has this trim is going to be done like this just going up and down up and down nothing special at all just tiny tiny stitches that are going to hold it down and that's how the pocket flap looks it looks really nice the top of the flap is surged you can see the stitches are not visible at all i'm really happy with the way they finish and on the inside the satin bias tape is keeping it neat but it won't be seen from the outside and it was easy to follow that curve doing it by hand i have already sewn the pockets in like you would you know your general construction and now the flap is sewn and on the edges i have all that raw edge of the trim which is folded back and so on the edges of the flaps doing some hand finishing there tiny tiny stitches that is going to enclose that and just finish it off really neatly the magic about working with fabrics like this is that you can do quite a fair bit of hand sewing and it will never be seen it doesn't have to be so pretty either so you don't have to be very skilled to be able to do some hand sewing in fabric like this because the thread will just sink into the fibers so here we have a main layer that's constructed you can see the pockets are in the flap is in there and the lining is also made this way of lining is the easiest way you can ever line because all you have to do is put the lining inside the jacket wrong sides together they are identical pieces and just line everything up around the edges and around the bottoms of the sleeves and around the bottom of the garment it's so so easy it's a little fiddly though but it's not complex after aligning all the layers together and now i'm zigzagging them together Together. I'm using a medium sized zigzag just to hold the lining and the main layer together all around the neckline, all around the hems, all around the bottom of the sleeves and that's just going to keep them together neatly. It's not going to be the finished edge, you won't see this and then we're going to be ready for all the binding after these two layers are together, they can just act as one. 
Here you can see I'm top stitching the binding. You have already seen me sew binding many times. I know I'm always gonna be hand basting that and I'm just sewing it down now and I'm gonna have a really clean finished jacket all the way around. As I said before, this is not the way I would like to finish it. I would not wanna use store-bought satin bias tape and finish my jacket like this. I don't think it looks very professional, but it did save me hours and hours of time and I didn't have the same type of fabric to make the whole amount of bias tape required. I would have wanted to make it in the same wall it's going to accomplish the task of having a nice clean finished edge on the jacket but it won't be seen because after i finish sewing all of this binding i'm going to be covering it with that trim the same way you saw me do with the pocket flap by hand i'm going to sit here for hours upon hours and sew this trim on by hand tiny tiny stitches and that will be the end of my jacket I've decided to put buttons and I'm gonna have six buttons going down the center of the jacket. And I did do a test run. I have a scrap that's already interfaced of the same material and I figured out that was the correct size here. I did one that was a little small. I always practice. I would never just go ahead and do the actual button holes without practicing. So I'm happy with the size there. With this type of fabric, it's really difficult to mark where you want the button holes with chalk or with any other thing. Because of the texture of the fabric, nothing's gonna really show and hold. So I just marked with threads. You can see there's a mark, there's a mark, there's a mark. I decided mine were gonna be eight centimeters apart. That's three and a quarter inches apart. That's the distance adequate for this length of jacket and also to get one around my apex. This has lining on the other side so it doesn't have a facing it's got the lining right here and this has the potential of moving and shifting it is a slippery fabric so i've just hand basted those layers together before just to make sure that this is going to stay in place and that this isn't going to move and end up really wonky at the back so that is an extra step i took there and my buttonholes are going to be right in the center of that hand basted area here on the flaps i didn't do a buttonhole this is just for looks i've just sewn my button through the flap right there so nothing special. I can see my threads right here. This is where the first button is gonna go and I'm gonna be sewing right in there. I've got the first two buttonholes done. You can barely see them. They're sort of hidden inside this type of print. On this side though, you can see them really well. They're in between my basted area. That's keeping the lining in place and not moving. So that's it. I'm just gonna continue, make four more and then get rid of all these threads and I'll be done. Here is my finalized coda jacket. This was a bit of a labor of love. It took me a, quite a few days to pull it off. And that's even with simplifying everything and not using all the techniques I could have used. Just the cutting and interfacing just took so long. And yeah, hand sewing the trim around the edges also took ages. But don't think it's harder just because it's lined. It's just sewing two layers and putting the wrong sides together. Super easy than just, you saw how I zigzagged all around the edge and then this basically became one piece. The lining inside is just a polyester satin lining fabric, nothing really special. It's black because if my jacket moves and there's wind, I want it to look neat, classic. I don't want any print in there. And the bias tape that I used this store-bought, it's also made out of satin that finishes it all there. <clears throat> when I was filming this, I mentioned I would not want to use the store-bought bias tape to finish the edges. It's not my look, I think. So that's why I decided to use it, just because I knew it wasn't going to be seen. It was going to be covered with this. It would clean up the edges and and be neat you know and if it's seen inside it'll just blend in with the lining and you won't see it but if i was not going to put any trim around it i would have made my own bias tape even if it was another fabric i would have probably chosen linen to do it or if i would have had a lot of this i would have used this if i had made bias tape with this type of suiting i would have done it by hand on the inside i wouldn't have top stitched it flipped it in and then did all the insides by hand and that would have given you a really really clean edge would have taken just as long as it took to hand sew the the trim on <laughs> initially i had only made these pockets with this flap and then i tried it on and i felt yeah there's something missing up here on the chest so i added these pockets i just used the same flap piece for this one i just made it narrower to match this and the size i just figured that out looking at myself and seeing what size i like so that's something you can play with for sure the flap here is interfaced as well finished with the bias tape the trim 
I had so many meters of this trim, I thought I had way more than I needed and I ended up with that much left over. So that was, that was fortunate. <laughs> I had a bit of troubles finding buttons. Out of the two choices that I had, this was the best one. The gold color in the button is nice and light toned, similar to the trim. I wanna see if the camera can pick up the trim. You can see there's a little bit of gold fleck inside, like gold thread and then all these fuzzy bits. It matches the jacket perfectly, I thought. I was so fortunate to find that trim. And that's what I used here at the bottom as well. Inside, it's also finished with the bias tape and the lining is right there. Because I knew the trim was gonna be over here, I didn't really bind inside here being that careful. You know, like I did with the exposed linen binding with my other Coda jacket. I did a little pleat inside with the binding by hand. That was easy. And then I have like a little mitered area here inside the trim that you can't see. It's all tucked down by hand. The beauty about sewing things by hand on these fabrics is that you can do a lot of hand sewing and no one's gonna see it. I used six buttons on the front. I decided on eight centimeter distance. I think that's three and a quarter inches. And you can't really see the button holes. They blend in so well into the print there, they're not really noticeable. Maybe in the future I'll do bound buttonholes. This was not the occasion. I don't have a shoulder pad. This is nice and relaxed. There's a bust that there, but it's not so noticeable, but it does really make the jacket fit a lot better. Just with a little bit extra flair and I'm really happy with it. So let's see it on. This is the second Coda jacket that I made. It's the exact same pattern piece, the same fit. I just made it in a different way. I used a wool suiting will blend actually all the pieces are fully interfaced this one is lined i've got some satin lining inside and up closer you'll see the details there's quite a bit of handwork going on there and i'm really happy with how it turned out it's exactly like i had envisioned it the weave of this fabric is black and white so it's going to go with a lot of things i have the pockets on the side as per the original design but I did add my own chest pockets and flaps there. And here you can see this beautiful fabric. I found some really nice trim and I've sewn that by hand all the way around the jacket on the flaps. Everywhere that pocket flap is interfaced. Every single piece of this jacket is interfaced, actually every single thing. So I used quite a bit of interfacing for it. The buttonholes, you can't really see them that much because of the fabric. They just sort of sink in there. They're super neat. I have really nice buttons. I think it looks really good. Here is is a closer look at the neckline I just use the simple neckline option you know you can sew on a collar here or a hood but that was not my vision for this jacket and it's low enough that you can wear a little scarf maybe a blouse with a collar on top I have the trim on the end of the sleeve as well the lining is the same type of material that was used for the binding around the jacket but that's hidden underneath of the trim and it's just so nice I just can't wait to wear this out a bunch of times I've just got them here with my legato jeans but there are are many more ways I could style this jacket. It's a, basically a dream jacket for me to have. I'd wanted to make something like this for a long time. A bit of a designer inspired jacket but made by me and all the hours it took to make it are totally worth it. Super comfortable, nice and roomy, so nice. Love it. Here you can see it on buttoned up. If I want to do that I'll probably wear it open all the time. This is easier to do than what you think. It's just the trim that took so much time to sew on by hand. over the moon with this. I think it's amazing. It's so beautiful. It is the Coda jacket. I didn't do any hacks to the pattern other than adding these patch pockets with anyone can do. There's just rectangles. The flap is the same as the one on the bottom, just narrower. And then you can add trim. You can spend hours and hours of time doing that if you like, and you can get this amazing result. Lining it was easy. It's just so, so nice, so beautiful, easy to wear, it's roomy. It's not those really fitted jackets where you have to hold your breath to button up. Not this case, this is gonna be a workhorse for me. And you'll see it styled again, 
during the week with other things that I'm going to feature. So this won't disappear this week. You'll see it again on the channel. I'm really happy with it, very proud that I made it and it was so worth it. All the time doing all of this by hand, 100% worth it. <laughs> Don't forget to check out the huge site-wide sale. Head over to my Instagram page and look at this photo that I'm posting here. Find that on my grid and you can participate in a giveaway to win a pattern over there. So if you haven't yet followed me on Instagram, go ahead. I post really fun stuff over there as well. That's all from me today. I hope you make yourself an amazing jacket. You'll be super proud and the coda is just perfect for it. Expect to see me very soon with more Love Notions makes excited to share as well and I'll see you then. Bye!